Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I'm sorry, I always have to look down because I have to see if this other camera is recording. Because I try to keep them stacked in that way um, I'm not having to look back and forth. Okay, well I'm getting my music turned on. We got in here early, but I don't know. It's been a weird day. Good day, but a weird day. Well, I can't get this to come on. It only has 14% battery. It's probably not going to work all that great. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's okay. We can do this without music. So, what I want to talk to you about tonight is something that I talk about a lot, which is quiet time. So, I think that somebody that I did gel ministry with printed this off and I actually shared it on Facebook last year but it's just 15 verses of why we need to read the Bible and um, I think we're just going to do eight tonight and it looks like a lot of them are in Psalms there's one in Peter I may just uh, do Psalms and then the ones for tomorrow night are all different places so we're just going to make it easy tonight. Tonight's going to be easy Sunday. So I hope you had an awesome Sunday. I hope you had an opportunity to go and worship and learn with your church family. I did. And I look very tired because I got up at 3.30 this morning. I do, well, yes, I do know why. Because my hip hurt. And I can't sleep on my right side like I used to. And, uh don't like sleeping on my back and I tried sleeping on my stomach and that was like very horrible and so even when I sleep on my left side it pulls it pulls that nerve and it hurts then too so I'm gonna try a pillow between my legs tonight and see if that helps and I've been told that that's helpful so we'll see I would like a good night's sleep I may just have to take me some allergy medicine so that I can just sleep on my back all night and I won't care. Anyway, that's why I look so tired. Of course, I look tired a lot of times. Oops. That's not my password. There we go. Okay, so... Um, I think we'll jump into prayer and then we'll do these verses. Probably won't be on here a long time tonight. Um, like I said, I'm tired. I know one time I was on here and I was so tired. I nearly fell asleep while I was praying. I know that sounds crazy, but sometimes you can when you shut your eyes and everything gets quiet. I can do it. I can do it. My hair's a little wild because I've had it in a ponytail all day. Uh, it's just, um, just is what it is. At least it's clean. At least it got washed this time. Okay. Yo. There's always something going on. I just want to listen to music. You get, um, you get drawn away with the things that are going on. I just want to listen to some music in the background. Alright, well, let's pray. And, um, I didn't ask you to stop capturing. Okay, it's still... I don't know why that does that. I'm going to move that mouse. Okay. So I'm experiencing a little bit of pain. Um, this chair is not super comfy either. All right, well, let's go ahead and pray. God, we just come to you and uh, we just pray, God, we thank you that you have given us this word that we can learn more about you. And there are so many answers for our questions in your word, God, and that it is uh, used to teach us and to help us and guide us. There are just so many uses for your word, God, and it is so important to you 
for us to get with you and to read your word and to pray and to praise your name God we just pray for the sick people God we just pray that you would place your healing hands upon them that you would be with them God that they would feel your presence that you would give them strength and God we just I pray for my friend Josie she wasn't there today I don't think so I just pray for that if she's sick that you would heal her body God we just pray for um, all of the medical workers all of the law enforcement all of the um, firefighters and first responders and all branches of our military God we just pray for strength and protection that you would help them to do their job to the best of their abilities God that you would be with them that they would feel your presence that every day they would uh, seek your face through your word through prayer and through praise we pray for protection for their families also and we pray for the lost God we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they could be saved we pray for the prodigals to come home God we pray for them to remember the relationship that they had with you for them to repent for them to return to you for um, them to allow you to re re reconcile and restore the relationship as new God only like you can do it God God we just pray for all the disasters that are going on uh, bombings and volcanoes floods earthquakes all kinds tsunami warnings you know all kinds of things winter storms uh, we just pray for all these people God that they would reach out to you in their time of need and that they would experience the hands and feet of Jesus and the love and compassion of Jesus through others and God we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones there have been so many God we just pray that you would um, give them peace comfort and strength God and that they would feel your presence and also God there are so many people that are having babies so we we praise you for a new life we praise you um, for these new babies and we pray that you would be with these mothers as they carry these babies that you would watch over them during their pregnancy and their delivery God we pray for all the children that are missing right now we just pray God that you would send someone to rescue them that these people that abduct children God that they would be in jail for a really long time but God, we trust you with all things. And so we know that you are in control. And we love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, pray and share, warriors. I don't even know if I greeted y'all today. I don't know. Like I said, I'm sleepy. I'm struggling. I didn't fall asleep during that prayer, so I guess that was a good thing. But I've nearly fallen asleep several times in my chair this afternoon. Okay, so um, the first verse that we're going to read is, uh, We read the Bible daily to be rid of anxiety and to have peace. We all need no anxiety and peace. Because when we start focusing on the things of the world, we are going to be anxious. Okay, so 119, 165, which 119 is the longest chapter of Psalms. It has 176 verses. But there's a lot of good stuff in here. So with verse 165, it says, Great peace have they which love thy law, 
and nothing shall offend them. Oh wow, nothing shall offend us. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy com excuse me, commandments. I left my water in there too. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. And 164 says, Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Great peace have they which love thy law. So we, when we love God's law, we have peace. And when we have peace, we're not anxious. And we don't need to worry. Worry is such a waste of time. It is such a waste of time because usually we're worried about something that we can't control anyway. And so let's not waste our time worrying about something that we can't control, just like our government. Oh my. The decisions being made are not for us. And, uh, but I'm not worried about it because I know who's in control. I know that God is on his throne and I know that he's in control. And we may go through some hard times but that's okay he's still on his throne and he still loves us and he is going to take care of us and he is going to protect us and he gives us the holy spirit to give us discernment also uh for that protection too that we uh, that we discern when things aren't quite right okay so let's read Psalm 19, 7 through 8. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than they, they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Again, discernment. Through God's word, we have discernment. And so what it says on this is we read the Bible daily to set things right when life is out of control. And right now, pray and share warriors. This world is out of control. But that's okay. We're made to look like we are the minority in our thinking, but we really aren't. And Jesus has already overcome. Okay, so we read the Bible daily to have direction and know God's will. And that is found in Psalm 119, 105. So back over here to Psalm 119. One o five. You may hear my son screeching in the back. He's watching Veggie Tales. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth. O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand. Yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, and they are the rejoicing of my heart. And I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. 
So that is so good to have direction and know God's will. 119. I read more than 105. I read 105 to 112 because sometimes I get started and I think the next verse goes to and I just can't quit. So I read that whole little section there called None. N U N, not N O N E. N U N. Okay. So the fourth one is to experience healing and deliverance. And that is found in Psalm 107.20. Okay, and it says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare His works with rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord in His wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to heaven, they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man, and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still there are they glad because they they be quiet so he bringeth them unto their desired haven so again <laughs> we walk away we get in these storms we call out to god god comes and gets us and um uh and heals us and delivers us out of the storm. Just like he did the Israelites. We are the same. We walk away. We step away. We go, hey God, I got this life thing. I got it going on. I got everything I need. I don't need you. And then we find ourselves in a storm. And the first thing we do is we go, oh God, how did I get here? And you know, he comes to our rescue every time. And you only talked about infinite grace tonight and uh, I may talk about that on Tuesday because we are not starting youth until the 24th until after Walnut Springs has their spring break so I hate it because that's been a good three months So I won't be here on Wednesdays after the 24th. But until then, I can do things. Okay. So, five. The fifth reason why we read the Bible daily. To grow in the Lord. And that is found in uh, 1 Peter 2.2. 2. I'm just going down their list, and it's just taking me back and forth, but that's okay. Like I said, I probably will not be on here very long because I'm very tired. It's already been 20 minutes. Time goes by so fast when you're talking to yourself. Okay. First Peter 2.2 2 says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world, word, that ye may grow thereby. So we are to grow in the Lord. And um, if so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. So, um, we need, you know, especially, well, even as mature Christians that have been Christians for a while, we still need this word. We need it to grow, to grow stronger and to, um, 
just for learning, you know, and the Holy Spirit will, he, um, uh, he shows me things that I have, I know I have read a hundred times. And then that hundred and one time, or hundred and first time, hundred and first, um, I go, oh, I understand what that means now. <laughs> I hope I'm not the only one that is that dense sometimes when it comes to the Bible. But I really think, too, that um, we understand things when it's time for us to understand things. Okay, so in, we're back in 119 again. And um, so the sixth reason why we read the Bible daily is to have strength, comfort, and hope. And so Psalm 119.28 says, My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. So we get our strength from God's word. And so the next one is comfort. And it is verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word hath quickened me. And then 114, I'm thinking, is probably about hope. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. So we get strength, we get comfort, and we get hope from God's word. So number seven is to shape yourself and your life correctly. So 119.11 is thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of my mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. So, uh, to shape yourself and your life correctly. That's what that one was. And we have one more. Um, eight. And so, eight is going to be to be able to see clearly. And that is one nineteen one thirty. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me deliver me from the oppression of man so will i keep thy precepts make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes rivers of waters run down mine eyes because they kept not thy law. So, it helps us to see clearly and gives us understanding. Um, I'm always praying for the lost to have their eyes and their ears open because you can't understand the things of God without open eyes and open ears ears to hear the truth and eyes to see the truth but you also need the holy spirit to draw you to jesus you know holy the holy spirit is the one that draws us to the spiritual okay well that is all i want to do tonight i wanted to do one through eight tomorrow night we will do nine through fifteen
and then um, and then um, Tuesday we may do infinite grace because I was thinking about infinite grace and I may do infinitely free the next day because I have a lesson that I wrote on that um, I might <coughs> may have one on infinite grace too i don't know it seems like all these lessons that i've done before just keep cropping back up um, okay so this was my quiet time and when i talk about quiet time um let me describe what my quiet time consists of it's a little more than a lot of people and you by any means you don't have to do it this way this is just how I feel like God wants me to do mine right now and I do have the time and so every morning I get up I get my phone this this isn't the phone I get because this is my old phone I get my phone I open up U version because I like U version. I read the daily scripture and then I read the chapter that goes with the daily scripture because I like to read what's above it and what's underneath it so I can get a good context of what that scripture is about. And so I do that and then I go and I share the uh, scripture. On Instagram and I look through Instagram I follow a lot of uh, Christian artists music artists on Instagram so I that's kind of how I keep up with the concerts and what's going on so I share that and then I do my music share usually in the midst of getting Seth fed and getting what he needs done I'm, I'm doing that I'm just doing a song that God lays on my heart and what that song says to me and I do that on Facebook and then I uh, come in here and I pray I get on my knees and I pray I pray to God about uh, myself about my family about other things about people I don't even know about things that I don't even know you know things that God is in control of and then um, I do my Jesus Always devotion. And like I said, you don't have to do all this. I just kind of wanted to share this. And uh, I do that. And that usually has scriptures too. So I look up those scriptures. And then when I teach Seth during the week, he does the same devotional. So I get that devotional twice. So that's kind of neat. And so then I sit down and I just get quiet. And I get my notebook out and I just listen to God and what he has to say you know and he every day is new he brings us a new day every day of mercies and blessings and so much more and uh, so I just I just get still and I listen and I write it I write down what he is telling me is it a big loud booming voice no it's it's like thoughts it's like thoughts that I was not thinking it's that's how I know it's God is it was thoughts that I was not thinking and um, I just write them down because I'm afraid I'm gonna forget them if I don't and then um, I do another little series of prayers for other people to and also have a daily flip calendar that has a verse and i read that so i do all that that takes about 30 or 45 minutes but i have i have the luxury of time right now i haven't always had the luxury of time but i used to get up at 5 30 in the morning so i could get my quiet time done um and it just consisted of the U version verse and prayer that's all that's all the time that I gave God uh, I probably could have given him more but it's just all the time that I felt like I had but anyway 
you can do yours however you want to. You know, I think it's great to turn on some praise and worship music. Uh oh. I just unplugged my phone, but you know what? This quit working anyway. Oh, excuse me. I got the hiccups. That's just not good because I don't have my water in here. Okay. Maybe I can keep them at bay. I might have to go get my water. Okay, so this was today. Good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings. New opportunities to share my truth in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day, child. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, God, of new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for a new beautiful day and another Sunday to go to worship and learn with my church family. Um, he said, child, so many things are taking place this week to be aware but focus more on me and what I need you to do in obedience to me. Do not be concerned with things that you can't control. All right, we just read that while ago. Um, to be rid of anxiety and have peace. Maybe I need to, like, focus on that verse. I'm really not anxious. I'm concerned with the things that I see happening um, in our government. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm concerned. Um, just keep sharing my truths in the gospel of Jesus. Keep moving forward knowing that all things will work out for my children. Through Jesus, they will overcome all things to come. I am reaching out to all to repent and to return to me or to ask Jesus to be their Savior before time runs out for them to choose freely. A decision will soon be forced and freedom to choose will leave the world. The restrainer of evil will be removed and all chaos will ensue. Everyone thinks it is bad now. But the time to come will be so much worse. All my innocence will be with me though, never to be tortured again. Soon I will send my son to rescue them forever never to be mistreated again. My righteous judgment in wrath will be poured out unless these repent. And I said, I see all that you are saying clearly, God, in your word, and I see the level of evil that is taking place. We are surrounded by it. Please send Jesus soon, and thank you for your protection, mercies, and blessings, God. Thank you for meeting me today. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Please heal me so I can rest. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now be ready and keep being obedient to me. Be strong and courageous until the end, child. The reunion is soon and it will be so wonderful to see each one of you again here and safe. And uh, I said Maranatha, God. Okay, so it is time for an offer of salvation. And let's see how I want to do it. Let me talk about tonight. God's Word. How about Steps to Peace with God? And this is a good news tract. Good news tract. This isn't anything that I've made up. This is, I'm reading it. Out here. Okay, it's a little warm in here. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to turn my fan on. I put my sweater on because I've been a little chilly all afternoon. I know it's 70 degrees outside, but sometimes I just get cold. Okay, so step, and then sometimes I just get hot because that's just my age. Okay, so step one God's purpose, peace, and eternal life. God loves you and he wants you to live in peace with him and to receive eternal life. Since God planned for us to be at peace, you know, that's what we read tonight, is uh, no anxiety and have peace. 
with Him and to have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? I don't know. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans 5.1 For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 So that is step one. Step two is our problem. Sin and separation. God did not make us robots to mindlessly love and obey Him. Instead, He gave us a will and freedom of choice. That's what I was talking about a while ago. There will be a day when a decision will be forced on the people that do not go in the rapture they will have to make a choice they'll have to make a choice right now people can freely choose it's uh you have freedom you have free will and choice right now but like adam we often choose to disobey god and go our own selfish ways read genesis chapter 2 through 3 this side of our nature is called sin, and it separates us from God. Our sin separates us from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23 So after Adam sinned, the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3.23 but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have bidden his face from you, have hidden, sorry, not bidden, have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Isaiah 59, 2. So that's step one and two. And then we have step three, which is God's remedy, which is the cross. Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation from God. He died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay the penalty for our sins, completely bridging the gap between us and God. God has provided the only way that we must make the choice. God has provided the only way and we must make the choice. And each person has to choose. You, you're not going to get into heaven because your grandmother was a Christian. We all have to choose. We all, all, everyone, seven billion people on this earth have to make this decision. The Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 But there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2.5 Very truly I tell you, whoever bears, hears, I may need some reading glasses, <laughs> Whoever hears my word, Jesus, and believes him who sent me, has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. John 5, 24. And so step four is our response. Uh, receive Christ. We can receive Jesus Christ when we believe in his message and trust in him alone to save us. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 1. The Bible says, All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him, Jesus Christ, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Acts 10, 43. Yet to all who do, who did, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. So, I like this little diagram. I'm going to show you this little diagram. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to show it in two parts, I guess. Okay, and there's a little bit of a glare too. So you got the people side, you've got the cross in the middle, which says Christ, and then you've got God on the other side. Jesus is the only one that can bridge the gap between us and Him. And Jesus is the only one. So let me show you down here. Well, I don't know. It's kind of hard down here. Okay. That's as good as it gets down there. So on the people side, it says anxiety. We're not to be anxious. We're to be at peace. It says sin. It says separation. It says eternal torment. And it says, are you there? Are you here? Are you here on this people side? Um, on God's side, it says peace, forgiveness, relationship, eternal life. Got stuff in the way of my camera. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's that. I don't know. Alright. Um, it says, or here, or on the side of God. And uh, so this is how we receive Christ. All right, that's bugging me. Now you see all my folders over there. I need to do some house cleaning. Okay. All right. So, how to receive Christ. Admit you need. Admit your need. I am a sinner. We are all sinners. Two, be willing to turn from your sins repent believe that jesus christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave four through prayer invite jesus christ to come in and control your life through the holy spirit receive him as your savior so i'm going to say this prayer and uh if you would like to be saved then please repeat these words after me if you don't like this prayer then say your own okay Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am sinful and I need your forgiveness. I believe that you died to pay the penalty for my sin. I want to turn from my sin nature and follow you instead. I invite you to come into my heart and life. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. So God's assurance, His Word, if you sincerely prayed this prayer and asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, do you know what He has given you? And we talked about this at Sunday School this morning. When you receive Christ, you are born into God's family through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, who indwells every believer this is called regeneration or new birth god bless you as you begin your new life in christ the bible says everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved romans 10 13. neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god that is in christ jesus our lord romans 8:39. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through Jesus our Lord, Jesus, through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. He who has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life life. So if you said that prayer and you um, and you believe who Jesus is and that he died for you 
then um, that is your peace with God through Jesus. So welcome to the kingdom family of God. Um, the angels in heaven are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. You are now saved, sealed, sanctified by God through Jesus Christ his Son. And when the rapture comes, you will be going. We will all be going out of here. When we see Jesus in the clouds, and it's going to be so fast. It's the twinkling of an eye. I don't know whether that's a blinking. I don't know. But that's pretty fast. Um, we'll be gone. We'll be out of here. We'll be out of here. It'll be so fast. I don't know how we're going to get all the all the buried bodies and all of us out in a twinkling of an eye. But God does. I mean, He's got it figured out. And He knows exactly what day. He's going to send Jesus too. But not even Jesus knows that day. It says that in the scripture. So I don't set dates because I don't know what that date is either. But I do know that it's coming. And I do know that things are really getting lined up to where um, it's right for him to come. Okay. Well, we got that done. And we did the... Bible study. So let's do the blessing from God in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. I miss my friend Josie. She didn't come tonight. She, uh, they're having the snake hunt at Walnut Springs, so everybody is there um, this weekend. I didn't go. I just, my hip has been hurting, and I'm not looking for anything to make it hurt anymore. I have been riding my exercise bike, but I don't know whether that's helping it or making it worse. I don't know. Okay, well, let's be blessed. Let's be blessed by God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So God wants to give us peace. We have to find that peace through Jesus, though. If you did get saved tonight, then please put your name in the comments. I want to pray for you. If there's any verse that you can think of that goes with this, then put it in the comments. I'll add it tomorrow night, and we'll talk about it tomorrow night. And uh, I'm going to pray. I'm going to do a really quick prayer. I'm going to start trying to make this um, 45 minutes or less um, so that I can get in there and take care of my son because my husband's in Walnut Springs and uh, his family's supposed to bring him home. Oh no, he took his pickup. Never mind. Never mind, he took his pickup. He can drive home. All right, well, let's, um, let's pray. God, we just thank you. We thank you so much for your word and how it just fills our soul and it just helps us learn more about you and about Jesus and about the Holy Spirit and how it just um, directs our paths, how it gives us peace. We don't have to be anxious about things. We can have peace. And God, just all the many things that your word does for us. Help us to want to spend more time with you and in your word, God, learning more and more about you every day, just spending that special quality time with you, just in the quiet, just listening to what you have to say. Help us, God, just to grow closer and closer to you every day. Help us to walk in the ways of Jesus. Help us to keep moving forward with Jesus. Help us to be strong and courageous. No matter what happens, just to know that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. And that you will protect us and that you will see us through to the other side. Um, to the land of perfection where we won't have any sickness. We will not have any pain. We will not have anything. There won't be any drama. There won't be any, any anxiety. 
God, only peace, only love, joy, peace, and uh, compassion. So, God, we just praise you and thank you, and we love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Help us to testify to the goodness and help us to encourage others. Give us boldness to share your truths at every opportunity in the gospel of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, my Pray and Share Warriors, it has been an awesome night. I have really enjoyed looking up the scripture about why we need to read the Bible. And like I said, I cannot take credit for that. I didn't look those up. Those were already looked up. And um, But there are other things that I have been thinking about, too, that I want to, I feel like God has laid on my heart, like infinite grace and infinitely free and um, just different things that he has brought to mind to me lately. Um, it seems like I wake up every day with either a word or a song um, that he wants me to share. And so this morning I shared the song Amen by um, for King and Country. I really like that song. But I really didn't feel like it had anything to do with what we talked about tonight so I didn't share that with you but I'm gonna go ahead and get off of here I seem to not be able to get off of here under an hour's time <laughs> but maybe maybe someday maybe someday it's just I guess I have the gift of gab and I just talk anyway I love you all God bless you and your families abundantly. Have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow. And good night. Oh, much love and hugs also. Cyber hugs. Cyber hugs. Good night. <laughs>